Uh, good day everybody, welcome uh, to another video for uh, streaming live. Uh, I am your personal funky scene pilot, my name is Arkady Gijenko and I will be your captain for today's flight. And uh, today will be a, uh, another night flight. Uh, it is uh, a real world time in real world weather uh, out of Europe. We are in the country of the Netherlands, the uh, airport called Eindhoven. And we will be flying the uh, flight somewhere Cessna 414AW Chancellor uh, from Eindhoven to uh, Luxembourg uh, Airport, which is about a one hour flight or so at uh, 18,000 feet. Um, there is a beautiful moon uh, shining on our aircraft, and uh, we're flying on the WhatsApp network. Now, when we started uh, earlier uh, setting up, uh, there actually was a, there was actually a, a control uh, here in Eindhoven, but at the moment there is uh, no control. But uh, at least we're uh, we're live, so let's just go in and start up uh, the aircraft. Uh, we're going uh, cold and dark, so we'll have to start up everything, put in the uh, 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 flight plan uh, into the uh, GNS 530 over here. So I got a little uh, flashlight so we can have a look uh, around, otherwise it's just uh, pitch black. It will be demonstrated for you, you know, there's uh, hardly anything you can see. There is a little light, uh, the moon is helping us, but uh, obviously that will not be sufficient. So, let's get this thing going. Thanks all. And make sure it goes to full reach and the RPM goes all the way up as well. There you go. And this will last a little bit too. Now start up the uh, battery. Let me quickly do a little sound check because uh, again I've been uh, tweaking uh, the settings a little bit, so stand by one moment. Okay, for now I'm satisfied. What will have to see how it goes. Okay, uh, the alternators can go on. Turn on the anti-collision and the uh, oh, anti-collision and the uh, navigation light and the uh, magnetos for engine one and two respectively. And I believe uh, we have everything to start up the engine now. Check the fuel here. Well, it looks more than enough. Not sure what this. Uh, yeah, I think this is okay. So let's just go ahead and confirm it. Otherwise, we'll, we'll see it. Uh, We'll deal with it when we get there. Time remaining zero. Oh, that that is that is very depressing. Okay, let's uh, enough for the adults. So uh, let's start up fuel pumps. Go to high. I'm not sure if they should go to high or low. I'm uh, quite lazy. Not check the uh, the manual completely here. Let it get started. So, no worries, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you'll be in good hands with me anyway. Okay, so we got two running engines. So, let's turn on some lights. And also some overhead lights, because I believe. Oops, they are all off. And then we can turn off the uh, the uh, 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 flashlight. Let's get a little more lights going on here. And we're going to let the engine uh, warm up a little bit at around 1000 RPM. Okay. Not too warm, please. Just nice and mellow. Now that the engines are started, let's have a look at the uh, fuel time remaining. It is still sitting at uh, about 10 hours. Alright, uh, 
uh, Echo Hotel, Echo Hotel, which is uh, long, so you just do the clear button. And now your cursor is here at arrival, use the big button, one back, and you're here at uh, Eindhoven. Click it, Echo, Lima, Lima, X-ray. And we got uh, the airport that uh, we are, uh, uh, which is our destination. So we enter. Now we go for the arrival. Lift the LNO 3D, let me check again. Yes, that's firm. So we enter. Load it in. Uh, can we select a runway? Uh, let's see. Looks like we cannot enter runway here. That's fine, so we're going to load it. Now, procedure, we're going to select the uh, approach as well. And we're going to do an ILS Zulu for runway 06 at Luxembourg Airport. Enter it in. Uh, we're going to do vectors uh, via DIC 3D. I mean, who the hell thinks of these names, man? DIC 3D. And we load it as well. Let me just confirm this. So let's have a look. We're going Echo Hotel 550, 552, 575, Sobby, Oxos Intersection, Eduma, and then the arrival Elno 3 Delta. Uh, why is it not showing? Hell. There you go. Elno Lima X ray 73, and then the final approach via Dick. Okay, so looks like we're getting dick tonight. Uh, let me just double check because I think I see two dicks in here. This looks messy. This looks definitely messy. Um, we could maybe do this uh, while we are in the air. We're probably going to have to clean it up or whatever. So for now, let's take this. At least we have a uh, departure uh, route that we can take off. Sure, that looks fine for now. We're going to switch over to a, a GPS setting for the navigation. Uh, that is, uh, we'll use this later in the autopilot. And uh, we're going straight to our cruising altitude of uh, flight level 180. Seems fairly high, but you know this is uh, this aircraft is uh, um, pressurized. So I do still want to learn. It's uh, I'm not really sure if I should already like pressurize for uh, flight level uh, 180. For now, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and uh, uh, proceed with that. All right. Okay. So earlier I. Turn on the landing lights, the way accent. Well, we don't have to retract actually. Let's put on stalled heat. So the lights look in order. Let me test this here for a second. Okay. We are going to arm the uh, the altitude. Uh, for flight level 180. Navigation that is uh, pre armed now. So I believe uh, we should be good to go. Let's maybe have a quick look to see if there's any traffic uh, nearby. It doesn't look like it is. So we'll see. There might be some stations along the way. Now, uh, also have a look at the uh, VFR map. So we can just turn on this taxiway here and just uh, go all the way to uh, runway 3. We could maybe use uh, like an earlier point, let's see. Oh, we'll see when we get there. Okay. Let's get rid of that. So we're at the taxi. Taxi lights actually are already on. Uh, these two here. Well, it's this nice little, uh, this little breather light on, if you will. Uh, 
maybe one more thing before we uh, start rolling. So I'm not really sure on the WhatsApp network. Uh, I do not want to piss anybody off. Um, I'm not sure if we are allowed to set our own squad code. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Like 31, 21 or something. And we're going on uh, transponder on Charlie. Let me just double check. I believe the flight plan was filed. It's always good to double check. Flight plan was filed. So let's uh, get taxiing. Really think parking brake. It's a beautiful evening. Oh, look away! This is not happening. And I'm going to turn on the uh, landing lights actually, just so that we can uh, see a little bit better. Because this airport is uh, quite poorly lit. So. Oh, look at the moon through the uh, uh, sun visor here, look at it. I like it. So we're going to turn right on the uh, next taxiway. If we uh, if we can see it, I believe it's here. <laughs> yes. Flight of ground, uh, Cessna 414, whiskey for Papa 822, taxi and ground with 03 for departure, right of ground. Okay, so we stated our uh, intentions in case anyone is here. So we will not be using uh, this intersection just yet. And uh, yeah, man, if you can uh, pick it up, this aircraft, uh, it's by uh, FlySimWare. It is, it's absolutely amazing. I totally love this. And uh, uh, they used to have, uh, I believe, like one version, one previous version. Uh, the sound, I just liked it so much better. It sounded like some some school bus or whatever, like a diesel going har har har, and it was just a totally, you know mouth-watering sound and uh, I hope what I would assume as well that the sound that uh, it has now let's listen outside probably this is more accurate uh, to the real thing but I don't know I've uh, maybe not even ever seen one of these uh, in full consciousness uh, in my entire life I have no idea what they sound like but the sound was just finger licking good uh, not that this is bad, but the other sound, once I heard that, after some other up updates, I was like, oh my god, man, this just sounds... I don't know, I like sound, what can I say? Okay, so it looks like we're going uh, for the entire runway, but we won't be needing it. So I need to put in some right rudder to uh, stay on the center line. Let's take a left here. Okay, so let's stop here for a second and think about uh, what we're doing. See if there's any aircraft, uh, maybe on uh, final, uh, short final. Doesn't look like it. Eindhoven uh, traffic, whiskey for Papa, 812, taking off, runway 03. Eindhoven traffic. 
Solid, so let's line up. Here's our runway 03. And uh, let's just get going for just one second. Prepare something here real quick. Yeah, there you go. Alright. So let's go. So break release. I didn't, man. Well, need to put in some uh, left rudder now. Try and stay on the center line. Is a really loose. Okay, pull back a little bit. Man, this is almost worse than a bad landing. Okay, so we're airborne. Gear up. Is coming. So let's zoom out here a little bit. And power back a little bit. Try to keep things a little bit under control here. See if you can engage the autopilot, the auto damper on, and autopilot engaged. Okay, so far so good, so let's uh, reduce the uh, RPM uh, a little bit, so that you do not overstress the uh, engines. There you go, a little above 25, not sure if that is uh, according to the uh, manual, but so that we at least uh, can make some speed. And let's check the airspeed now. It's around 120 knots. And we're climbing a little over, uh, below 1.5 uh, So this nose down a little bit. Let's see if we can aim for uh, around uh, 1,000 feet per minute climb or so. And hopefully the uh, airspeed will, uh, will pick up as well. We got 18,000 uh, uh, feet to go. I believe transition level is around 3,000. Yeah, so it should be turning now. There you go. Okay. So after takeoff, uh, taxi light can go off. Gear is up. We were not using any uh, flaps. Flaps are up as well. Let's leave the landing lights on for a little bit. Just has something like a very old school kind of vibe about it, you know. Okay, so while the aircraft is uh, climbing, maybe uh, I don't traffic whiskey for Papa 812 clear of the runway. So 18,000 feet seems uh, actually rather high, but uh, let's see how this is going to go. I'm going to go for uh, the 992. Here we 
Rodrigo. Altitude, climbing through 57. Speed's picking up, we're a little below 140 knots. We are still uh, uh, increasing our vertical speed. Which makes sense because with the aircraft picking up speed as well, so let's go nose down a little bit more. So we're aiming for around 1000 feet per minute climb. And we might be doing this uh, a couple of times. Let's have a look outside. It's beautiful. Okay, so uh, just enjoy the eye candy for a bit uh, while I step away for a little bit and uh, pour myself a nice uh, refreshing drink and I'll be back with the two sh uh, shakes of the lamp stand. Okay, we're back. So obviously I should have said uh, we're uh, just grabbing a little drink uh, from the back. Okay, so let's uh, get back into the cockpit here. And let's see what uh, we're looking at. Speed around uh, 150 knots. Climbing to 78. A little over 1000. I mean, it's fine. Uh, in terms of... Uh, Mixture. Let's just experiment a little bit. I don't hear any difference. Uh, at least uh, the fuel flow should uh, should definitely uh, decrease. And then as I said uh, earlier, uh, I think I made a mess of the uh, flight plan. We could have a look maybe at the uh, VFR map and see what it uh, looks like over there. Because I must say it looked uh, rather messy. So Sobvi, Oscos, Eduma, Lima November Oscar, Leoa. LX873, Dick. Oh, it might be that the Dick is uh, in there twice because it's a go around procedure. So we will be uh, flying Lima X873 to uh, the uh, Dick uh, V1. And uh, we're going to take a right turn, which is left on the chart, to LX861, LX063, 061, 06 Foxtrot, and then there's the runway. In case of a mission approach, you follow the uh, the, uh, the blue line, and it's just taking you back to Dick. So it's all leading back to Dick, people. Okay, so let's just have a look at the flight plan and see if we can confirm this. So there's the arrival procedure after I do Oh, my bad. Then arrival is Lima November Oscar 873, Dick LX 861, 063, 06, India 06, Foxtrot, runway 06, and then there's the go around uh, procedure leading back to Dick. Okay, no, so it's actually, uh, it was perfect, there was nothing uh, wrong with it as far as I know, please. We are on our way to Sotvi. Oh, 
Nora should arrive in approximately three minutes. So the altitude, 11,000 feet. So let's just go ahead and turn off the landing lights and reflect them as well. Temperature is quite cold. And there actually is some visible moisture, so I guess it, it gets laggy when streaming. That's, that's a shame. Obviously, it's streaming software, but uh, you know we'll manage. Uh, so let's turn on the uh, windshield uh, and anti-ice, and maybe some cabin heat as well. No, I still not have really truly. Uh, Explored all the heating uh, options. I've played around with it a little bit. But it's, it's basically I'm just winging it always. So 12,500. It's actually a powerful, uh, quite a powerful uh, engine, I believe. That's. Uh, Check the map to see if there's any uh, any uh, radio stations up ahead, but it does not look like. Looks like we're actually threading the needle to the uh, left of us is Dusseldorf and Köln, I believe, and to the right is Brussels. But uh, we are uh, we're not within the range, so we're just going to stay here on the Unicom uh, then nice and cozy with other people who are uh, on the Unicom, although there is no traffic here right? actually uh, besides us. And what I also like about this aircraft is the, uh, is the lighting. There's this cute little uh, lighting panel here. All these little uh, sliders for all these different uh, uh, different areas of the uh, of the glare, uh, glare shield, I believe it's called. And it's uh, really customizable. It's very nice for uh, during night flights, it's uh, very immersive, and I like that very much. Oh, there's a big city there uh, up ahead. Okay, so we are now uh, at Sophie on, on our way to uh, Oscos. We should actually arrive in about uh, 1 minute and uh, 10 seconds, and then we are on our way to uh, Eduma. So the aircraft does not, uh, or the GPS does not really have a vertical navigation. Uh, there should be a function, uh, there is a vertical navigation button, uh, which uh, as far as I know it should, uh, I haven't mastered it, but I believe it should allow you to sort of uh, tell the GPS when you want to be at which altitude, and the GPS is going to monitor that for you. Something along those lines, uh, at least. But uh, that's uh, more advanced, so uh, I'll come to that uh, later on. Okay, so let's check the speed. It's actually dropped a little bit. Let's see if uh, this will make any difference again. The full flow. Since we are uh, rather high now. I believe uh, once we actually reach 18,000 feet, we're not 
clearly going to be cruising here for a long time. What we could do. So we're at 17,000, so we're almost at our uh, cruising altitude. Let's go to the flight plan. And let's see how far away is uh, our destination. So the final approach uh, is about 107 nautical miles. So let's see, 18,000. We want to be around 2,000 feet. We're going to have a look at the chart in a bit. We should traverse or descend about 60,000. So that is... Uh, 30, 48, around 49 nautical miles before... Uh, I believe before uh, Lima X ray 06 Foxtrot, we should start our descent, which is in about uh, 50 miles or so, or 60 miles. Okay, so now that we are on the altitude hold, the speed is definitely picking up a little. Uh, so far, that's actually fine for me. Uh, we're going to open the Navi charts now, the uh, dreaded Navi charts. I said that it's basically because of the lag, uh, but it is, again, it's, it's a beautiful piece, man, I'm super happy with it. It's also available on your uh, smart device uh, nowadays, which is super convenient. We're going to pull the chart here for uh, ILS localizer uh, runway 06. So the airport elevation is 1,234 feet, the runway is at 1,158, so we're around 1,200 feet uh, above sea level. We have 109.9er, that is already dialed in right here in the GPS, done automatically once, as soon as we uh, uh, select the approach. We're not within range, otherwise this shall uh, populate as well. We should just be aware that it will read 06 for the runway. So we can set uh, 057 degrees for now on the uh, course deviation indicator. So how much was it? 057? 056? 057, yeah. I believe. Uh, Should be zero five seven then. There as well. Okay, so that bit is, uh, has been set up. So yeah, we're flying on the wet sim, but uh, there's no radio actually at all. Um, but obviously, I must admit, I'm, I'm not too, uh, I'm not too depressed about it. Uh, this, is a, this is a good way to uh, get used to it uh, because it's been a while since I've done it. Uh, I've been doing it uh, lately uh, a couple of times, uh, almost exclusively on the stream and not, uh, not off the stream, but. Uh, like a bug in my throat. Let's have a little sip. Well, you know, in case uh, some station all of a sudden uh, pops up, I'll be ready and we're going to do it. So speed is now picking up nicely. We're at 180 knots. You're at 80,000 feet. I do believe we should start our descent uh, 
preferably a little earlier rather than later. As I always say, you know, you do not want to uh, end up with a high energy uh, approach, you know, and then you have to dissipate all the speed. Oh yeah, so uh, let's go back to the charts and have a look at uh, what we're seeing here. So it looks like final approach fix, initial approach uh, fix. Uh, Lima x ray 0 06 Foxtrot. So that's correct, 06 Foxtrot is where the uh, uh, glide slope starts. That will be at 3000 feet. So, 18,000 minus 3000. That will be 15,000, so 45, around 46 nautical miles distance we should start our descent. But uh, let's go for, uh, can we see what the wind actually is doing? I do not believe we have a, any kind of wind indicator uh, here. Yeah. So I'm not sure if we're uh, flying with a headwind or a, uh, actually it looks calm if you ask me, but you know, it's wind. How do I know? So we're just going to cruise a little bit longer. So while we do that, it is a perfect excuse to play around a little bit. Little knob there that will be 1500, 500, so 
500, 400, 300. 200 should be on there somewhere. Can we even see it? No, well, sort of. I'll take it. It's, it's not too important. Alright, so where are we now? On our way, on our way to uh, Lima XY 873. Let's have a look at the chart. It will not be on here uh, quite yet, I believe. And it doesn't matter, so let's just uh, minimize this for a bit. And again, look at the flight plan, because I believe we should start our descent uh, any time now, if we want to be a little bit early, that is. So, we could, if we start it now, we start uh, around uh, 30 nautical miles early. But, you know, for taking it slow, it should be fine. Let's have a look at the uh, actual, you know, the actual approach. <laughs> I mean, the uh, arrival. Flight level zero seven zero. I mean, look at that. So, should be at or above flight level zero seven zero. So let's just start by uh, descending to zero seven zero. Then there it goes. So, come back. Oh, man. Zero seven. Alpha goes off. And what I will do? I'm not sure if this is the way. Intuitively, it seems so. It seems like a decelerate. You know, I mean, if you go nose down, the aircraft's just going to pick up speed anyway. And then nose down a little bit. Let's see what that uh, is going to do for us. Minus 500 feet. I guess that's, that's quite decent for now. Although. Check the. Uh, five minutes. Six minutes. So, 1000. We'll at, um, we actually should descend around 2000 feet per minute if we want to make that. So, we're not going to be making that. But we could increase a little bit. At least to around 1000 uh, feet per minute. A little over. We're just going to watch the speed. Now, the flap. Uh, uh, extension speed. It's 171 knots. So maybe, you know what? Let's do this right now. Flap one. And it's definitely immediately going to reduce our speed as well. And let's see if we can uh, descend a little more aggressively. Definitely, yeah. Keep watching our uh, speed. We do not want uh, to be in an overspeed uh, situation. And so far, this looks quite stable. We're around 2,000 feet uh, per minute descent, which I guess is fine in the uh, in an, uh, uh, pressurized uh, aircraft. So it should not be too bad on your ears, but. What I said earlier, I'm not really sure. Let me just get this yoke out of the way. Not sure if I'm using this correctly, though. Um, like, are you going to, are pilots, you know, uh, supposed to, like, ride it? You know, like, follow it? I mean, how OCD should you get? You know what I mean? Like, you have more to do than just, you know, every thousand feet. It means every minute. Uh, but yeah, you know, I don't know. Let's just set it. For 7,000. Uh, you know what? Just forget it. This is uh, confusing me. And there is the uh, look. I'll tell you what I mean. So, if you want to set it like we had for 18,000, basically what you do, you see the uh, outer line here, which uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, and there's the inner circle there as well, 14, 16. So it looks like, you know, they're sort of the same. Uh, so I'm not really sure how the aircraft. Uh, makes the uh, distinction between which writer of the two you, you're requesting. And uh, uh, someday I'll be a hero as well, uh, a hero and I'll be able to interpret this uh, uh, more, you know, better. So far I have some, some understanding, but I tend to be like, either just go out and completely understand it 
and until the time I'm just playing around with it, sort of intuitively, you know what I mean. So, that's what we're doing. So now you have a little uh, story of my life. The speed is still stable. Descending, uh, also stable descent. ILS frequency is not picking up yet. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, we do need to be wary that as soon as the uh, VOR and radio and distance uh, fields populate, we should check if it says ILS 06. Because in some cases, I've noticed it may say the opposite, uh, which I believe is 2, 4. stuff happens, I'm not sure if that's, you know, if it's pilot error, you know, like, I don't know how to use these buttons, but uh, we will keep an eye on it. So we're at uh, 11,000, let's also have a look at the uh, transition altitude. Which is level 80. Yes, we check here for the final approach chart. The division altitude is 5,000 feet. And we check the uh, QNH. We open the airport, weather. We're at zero seven knots, so we have a slight crosswind. No headwind, crosswind. Actually, a little more headwind than crosswind. Uh, and the QNH is, if I can read it correctly, zero nine or nine or eight. Okay. We're well, below ten thousand feet, so let's uh, turn on the uh, uh, landing lights. Extend. And turn them on. So excuse the uh, lag, please. It's, you know, it's my system's uh, my system working at full capacity. But let's get the yoke back. Uh, what's our speed? So we're uh, 1,000 feet be uh, above uh, 7,000. Speed's fine. We're just going to keep it, but we may need a little bit more. Uh, may need a little bit more uh, uh, mixture. You know what, I'll just go full edge. I do not hear the engine make any uh, difference in sound anyway. You feel there's still more than enough. And one could actually wonder, is it not too much to land? That I'm not really sure. Okay, so now we're at uh, 7,000. Now we should actually watch our speed a little bit. So let's increase a little bit more. And we probably need a little bit more RPM here. Let's go a little bit slightly over the middle or something. And just see what the changes that we made are uh, doing uh, to, uh, to our attitude. So we are now at Lima X-ray 873, and then we are on our way to Dick. So we'll arrive at Dick, which is our uh, initial approach uh, fix, I believe. Uh, it is around 8 minutes uh, uh, away from us. So this speed we should definitely try to keep. It looks like it's wanting to decrease a little bit, if I'm being very OCD about it. Maybe increasing, so it, it's stable enough for now, but we should not uh, forget about it. So let's have a look at the uh, chart again. Get rid of uh, the side panel there. So 3000 feet at uh, Lima X-ray 06 Foxtrot. 
wait a minute. Uh, Lima X is zero six India three thousand. Which of these two now? Let's see how does this work. No six box slot. It says here it's where the glide slope starts. Okay. So I was right after all. All right. Speed still okay. And you see how laggy this is. Like I'm wondering if it's doing anything sometimes. Uh, so on our way to Dick, I believe this should be uh, the Dick here. So I guess we can uh, ditch this chart. We pro should probably go to 4,000. Let's just do that. And then I guess we can get rid of this thing altogether. So, let's get our asses into character. 140 knots. We're going to descend to 4,000 feet. So the alt goes off. And nose down a little bit. Five minutes for uh, three thousand feet. I guess we should descend a little more aggressively. Let's go for around one thousand. Speed's picking up. As long as we do not exceed one seven zero, uh, we should be good, I guess. Looks like the uh, ILS is alive, and it says ILX, uh, ILS number six. So that is uh, perfect. That is what I was hoping to see. So uh, that bit is okay. Now, hopefully, they have lights. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, as you've seen earlier. Uh, I've, I've done the exact same flight as I was streaming earlier, and uh, I also did notice that I made a really stupid mistake. Uh, I'll tell you about that in a second, but uh, but I did it again at some some stage, uh, not streaming, and then the runway lights were on. So I'm really not sure, but it seems quite random. Uh, so now back to the problem that I was uh, experiencing. As soon as the aircraft turns onto uh, the uh, localizer. The nav button here, the nav, uh, the nav function of the uh, 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 of the autopilot turns off. That's actually normal, and you should then re-engage it because it will switch from GPS to uh, localizer. But then it turns off, and you need to sort of refresh it. I totally did not do it, so the aircraft was lining up. Let's pretend we're going like this. The aircraft was lining up. Uh, then the uh, GPS switched to uh, uh, to localizers, but the nav turned off. So the aircraft just sort of went like this. And then I believed it was making errors, and because I guess I assumed since the uh, ILS sometimes does show the different one, you know, basically I panicked. You know, it's a fancy way of saying I panicked. Okay, so uh, 4,700. So we should now go to uh, it was 09908, if I'm not mistaken. It's not showing uh, in hectopascal there. I thought it was. Well, then we're just going to use the uh, B button. So then we're actually at 4,000 now. I thought uh, we were able to uh, set it. Okay, so let's watch the speed. Because it's climbing a little bit. But so far it seems okay. We are how far away? The me. We're at 19.6 nautical miles uh, from our destination, from the ILS. And he 
here comes our approach. As soon as we approach uh, reach deck, at, uh, in about two minutes, we'll take a right turn and then we'll fly on approach. And then we need to uh, dissipate, like, or lose one more uh, uh, instance of a thousand feet to be at the uh, glide slope uh, altitude. And then hopefully we're going to do a uh, ILS landing, obviously. So it's exciting. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see a runway. Speed for now is okay. The aircraft tends to uh, lose speed quite easily. Uh, when you need it to, and this is also safe uh, for the gear extension. When you, would, if you would extend the gear right now, it would like easily drop to uh, 120 uh, knots or something. So, yeah. So uh, in that sense, we're not we're not very high on energy at all. Which is perfect. Which is uh, precisely what uh, what I was aiming for. Now let's quickly have a look at the approach. Um, so, Dick, Lima X-ray 861, Lima X-ray 063, 06 India, and then Foxtrot. So basically one, two, three, and then the fourth will be, uh, okay. The fourth will be uh, uh, the glide slope, uh, the final approach fix. All right, so right up. I'm going to turn on the uh, taxi lights as well, just so that we are uh, as visible as we can get. And again, I left the, uh, the fuel pumps on uh -huh, all the time. And I tend to forget to turn those off sometimes. Now, not sure when we are allowed to descend to 3,000 feet. I guess it's fine if we do it at our own discretion at some point. So what was the name of this approach? L03 Delta. Also, not forget to uh, go full uh, RPM as soon as we're uh, about to land, which uh, will be momentarily. And again, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to see some uh, runway lights today or tonight, uh, rather, I should say. But it tends to be a surprise in Microsoft Flight Simulator. The other day at uh, Rotterdam and sometimes at Eindhoven, there's just there's no lights, uh, no runway lights at uh, the evening. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's not uh, very desirable, you know what I mean. Okay, so we are uh, 12 nautical miles from uh, the uh, VOR, uh, from the ILS, I should say, and the airport should, I believe, to our left, -ish, around there, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe we can have a little uh, sneak uh, preview. Well, I see beautiful lights, I can tell you that. But to, uh, to say that I see a, uh, a runway with bunny lights going, hey man, come land here, come land here, nope. So that's going to be interesting. So what's our speed doing? A little, uh, let's see, 145 knots. But for now, that's, that's perfectly fine. What the hell was that? Sounded like, oh, uh, it might have been my, uh, my rudder. So let's just say that I got cramped in my uh, left toe or whatever, and I accidentally uh, hit one of the other pedals there. Oh, nobody's people in the back. Well, today there's actually nobody. It's just, uh, it's just us. Okay, 
4,000 feet. And I think we should now uh, start our descent to 3,000. So let's dial that in and get ready for the uh, final approach, 3,000 feet. Disengage the help mode. And go nose down. And let's see if uh, Luxembourg uh, is awake. Can I put on the uh, NC? I think I put on the ice uh, light. Look at that. Probably when I... Uh, yeah, it's when I press the L button accidentally. Okay. Okay, so we're descending to uh, 3,000 feet. The speed's picking up a little bit. As soon as we do not get over uh, 171, we should be okay. So Lima Exodus 063, it is up next in three minutes. And then Lima Exodus 06 India, and then Lima Exodus 06 Foxtrot will be the glide slope. 3400. Power back a little bit on the uh, manifold. And we should not forget uh, in a moment to uh, go full RPM as well. See if there's anything else. Luxembourg traffic, Whiskey 4 Papa 812 on approach for ILS 06, Luxembourg traffic. Okay, so we stated our intentions. Okay, reaching 3000, so we we're going to uh, sit idle here uh, all the way until we uh, get to the glide slope. up a little bit, like deep water. Oh well, let's just take this. Okay, the speed is... Oh, the 145, 145, uh, something like that. It's fine with me. DME. It's actually uh, increasing now, but it's because we're flying away from the uh, ILS, which is uh, to our left and then a little bit behind us. It's just perfectly normal to start uh, decreasing once we, uh, well, basically start uh, turning left from uh, Lima X06 uh, India. Let's have a little external view, have a look at the aircraft and the, uh, the surrounding area, the beautiful lights. Yeah, it's just a beautiful aircraft, this man, just love it, look at the bright lights, the landing lights, they're so bright, man. Not sure it's realistic, but I totally like it. Get uh, ready for a uh, left turn. Not much speed here, 140, a little below. And then, as I said, uh, the navigation uh, will turn off as soon as the uh, ILS gets picked up, or the localizer uh, gets intercepted, I should say. So, we should not forget to. Uh, re-enter the uh, navigation uh, uh, function there for the, uh, uh, for the autopilot. Good news, we have a, uh, a runway that's actually lit. 
always happy to see that. All right, so let's uh, expedite a few things here. Full RPM now for the uh, final approach. And drop the gear. We're at 10 nautical miles, but I guess it's fine. We just should uh, watch our speed so we do not get uh, too sluggish and slow. Speed will definitely start uh, decreasing uh, as soon as the gear is uh, down. There you go. Which is fine, uh, obviously. But it should not get too crazy. So we are at the correct, uh, uh, the correct um, uh, altitude. We have uh, fuel pumps on. We have landing lights, taxi lights as well, full RPM, and where it flaps one. We're below the glide slope, as you can see right here, the horizontal white line. And we should get ready for a left turn, and uh, then the aircraft will intercept the uh, ILS, or the localizer, I should say. There's our destination, Luxembourg Airport. Okay, so turning on to uh, uh, localizer. And as I said, the GPS function will switch automatically from GPS to uh, log, VLOG. There you go, and as you can see, the nav now turns off. So we re-engage the nav button there. And then you see here localizer and glide slope. This is good news. Luxembourg traffic, whiskey for Papa 812, localizer 06, intercepted on final approach. Luxembourg traffic. <coughs> My apology. Okay, so we state our intentions again. There's zero traffic here whatsoever, but it's good practice. Um, the aircraft does not have an uh, approach button, so it will basically follow the glide slope uh, on its own accord. As soon as it's, uh, as long as it's in the VLOG here, and here you see localizer and glide slope. This is basically your uh, you know, built-in approach uh, function. So uh, the wind was 0 0.80 at, I don't know, 7 knots. That's basically a headwind. So the gear is already down. So any moment now we should go for uh, flap 2. But let's uh, carry on a little longer with uh, 6.7 nautical miles. And the uh, uh, autopilot disengage button, probably best to use uh, this red button here, so we don't have to reach all the way there. But that's something I'm trying to get into my system. Okay, so the glide slopes here, so the uh, aircraft's going down. The speed should pick up a little bit, so let's go flap two. And immediately, you see the uh, speed drops, which is good, it's exactly what we need. I don't know the actual final approach speed, but it is around anywhere between 100 and 90 or 85 or whatever is, is fine. Just don't smack it down too hard. power a little bit, so we're on to 30 manifold pressure. 
33.2 nautical miles so let's go for the final approach uh, the last uh, uh, flap setting for the approach
leave the batteries on for a little bit while I open the door. Maybe let's uh, get a little uh, little flashlight uh, thing going. So maybe instead of dropping off people, you know, let's just go and pick up some chicks. You know what I mean? Okay, so the uh, upper compartment of the door is open and the lower. I mean, look at the floor, I mean, it's beautiful. Right? Okay, so please do not drive into my wing. Welcome to the world of Microsoft Flight Simulator, and they mean really well. Other than that, I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing simulator, you know. Uh, people are dissing it, and so am I. I mean, for stuff like this, you know, it's, it's insane. Anyway. Again, welcome to uh, Luxembourg, everybody. Let's just turn off the alternators and then finally the battery. That's it. So, uh, our shift is done. Let's uh, kill the light here as well. Oh, it's not doing it because the uh, because of the entry light here uh, that we turned on. Well, that's fine. We'll just uh, leave, leave that to the maintenance people. Alright, so again, uh, thank you for checking, everybody. and. Uh, Everybody stay funky. Hopefully, uh, see you some uh, someday soon. And uh, see you at the next one. Have a very good day. Bye bye.